listening to UGA Gospel Storm Midnight Love Garden with Miss Coco Bowden on iHeartRadio. How you doing, everybody? I'm Nina Taylor, and here is your gospel news. Dick Gregory was a pioneering comedian and civil rights activist who took on race with layered humor during the turbulent 1960s. Dick Gregory was born in St. Louis, Missouri. Richard Claxton Gregory. He was one of six children born October 12, 1932. Gregory grew up in crippling poverty. His father abandoned the family, leaving his mother to work long hours as a maid. At an early age, Gregory found the power of comedy to defend himself against childhood bullies. In high school, he was a track star, showed a thirst for activism when he protested against segregated schools. He was later accepted to Southern Illinois University, where he excelled in track. In 1954, he was drafted into the Army. He began performing stand-up at that time, and after winning a contest, he became part of the Army's Entertainment Division. Gregory received his big break in the 1960s when he played at the Playboy Club. Known for his sophisticated, layered humor, he took on racial issues of the day. He was a trailblazer for other African-American comedians, including Richard Pryor and Bill Cosby, and eventually ran for political office. He was on the forefront of the civil rights movement in the 1960s and became pivotal friends with Dr. King and Medgar Evers. He was arrested dozens of times because of his activism. While jailed in Birmingham, Alabama in 1963, he once wrote that that was the first really good beating he had ever had in his life. He ran for U.S. president as a write-in candidate for the Freedom and Peace Party during the election between Richard Nixon and Hubert H. Humphrey. Over the years, Gregory became devoted to health and fitness, adopting a vegetarian diet and examining issues related to diet within the African-American community. He was married for more than five decades and a half to Lillian Smith, whom he married in 1959. They had 11 children. In 1999, Dick Gregory was diagnosed with lymphoma. He refused chemotherapy and instead turned to diet and alternative treatments. The cancer went into remission. He died on August 19, 2017 at the age of 18. James Fortune understands that if you're going to preach redemption in the 21st century, you're going to have to make a big production of it. Complete with Fortune's spoken, sung, and shouted encouragement, James Fortune, who was born November 19, 1978, in Richmond, Texas, was raised in the church where his dad was pastor. He was playing drums by the age of five. Fortune used to watch his children sleep in the bathtub before he lay beside his pregnant wife at night in a motel, wondering how he was going to provide for his family the next day. For the gospel singer, being homeless for seven months in 2007 was the most strenuous stint of his life. The constant letdown of watching others get hired for jobs while he and his wife Cheryl were overlooked weakened his faith. He asked in prayer why God seemingly abandoned him during the most stressful time of his life. It was then that he was led to write the words to the song 2009 hit I Trust You, which topped the gospel national airplay charts for over 28 weeks. There are seven deadly diseases that strike African Americans harder and more often than they do white Americans. Fighting back means genetic research. It means changing the system for testing new drugs. It means improving health education. It means overcoming disparities in health care. It means investments targeted to the health of black Americans. And the evidence so far indicates that these investments will pay health dividends not just for minorities but for everyone. Here is a top seven list of the illnesses that plague the african-american community most number seven cancer cancer treatment is equally successful for all races yet black men have a 40 percent higher cancer death rate african-american women have a 20 percent higher cancer death rate than white women number seven blacks develop high blood pressure earlier in life and with much higher blood pressure levels nearly 42 percent of black men and more than 45 percent of black women aged 20 and older have high blood pressure number five strokes kill four times more 35 to 50 four year old black Americans than they do whites. Number four, despite lower tobacco exposure, black men are 50% more likely than white men to get lung cancer. Number three, death from lung scarring, sarcoidosis, are 16 times more common among blacks. The disease recently killed NFL star Reggie White at the age of 43. Number two, African Americans are three times more likely to die of asthma. And the number one killer of African Americans is diabetes. It's 60% more common in black Americans than in white Americans. Blacks are up 2.5 times more likely to suffer a limb amputation and up to 5.6 times more likely to suffer kidney disease than any other people with diabetes. 
Well, that's your top seven most deadliest diseases that plague the African American community and your gospel news. I'm Nina Taylor. Let's get back to more great gospel music on this great station. Right there, Sylvester, um, Sylvester Jackson, give it to the Lord. See, hon, I told you I got you, I got you, I got you. I had a talk with him earlier on Facebook in my inbox, and <laughs> he was like, Miss Coco, I said, I got you. I don't mind. Okay, y'all, so we're, we're talking about now the Red Cross volunteers that are going from North Carolina. They are rushing down to Houston to help out with the relief fund for those Hurricane Harvey residents. 
in Houston, Texas, and the American Red Cross has sent 29 volunteers from Western North Carolina to help with those residents um, cope with the flooding. And, you know, there's still more rain expected down in that area. And let me see, they'll be working at a shelter that houses over 5,000 people. So shout out to North Carolina for going down and doing your thing. And again, you can always go and donate to Red Cross by actually just going on the web cro- um, website, Web Cross. I mean, <laughs> on the website, I'm sorry, the website Red Cross, Red Cross. And also, if you're in the North Carolina area, especially the Charlotte area, and you would like to send some money to Red Cross, then you have to go and contact Bruce Henderson at 704-358-5051. Again, that is Bruce Henderson, 704-358-5051. He can give you the information that you need. You can either donate with them or either you can find another place in your local area to donate to those Hurricane Harvey residents, y'all. I seen the footage, you know, I seen so much footage of it and, you know, my prayers right now with every one of those families and so far 30 people have been found dead and, you know, it's, it, it hurts. It hurts to hear, tell us so many people being out without homes without food, without water, and then the price gouging on everything, how everybody, you know, most of the stores and stuff, anytime a disaster happens, they always want to jack up the prices. Where is the humanity? You know, where is the humanity in this? We have people who really don't even know what money looks like right now because it's probably floating in the water. You know, and here we are going to charge. I think I saw one picture where water was like $30 for a little 24 pack. $30. Really? These are your brothers and sisters and you are jacking up prices. Mm, That's not good for America or any other place. So we need to reach out and help those of you who can buy extra extra bottles of water, get them and donate them. Y'all know wherever you're at there, you know, they're less than $30 if you're not in those flooded areas. So send that water on. And I do know for a fact that the Red Cross if I was going to say um, give your money to anybody, I would say give it to Red Cross because I have seen Red Cross do what they say they're going to do. So I'm with Red Cross. That's where I will be donating to is Red Cross. I also have a team of women called the BBS Divas. And I will get with my team and see what we can do as well to help those residents down there in that area, y'all. And y'all, right now, Father, I stretch my hand to thee, O God. Lord, I ask you right now that you will supply the need of every woman, every boy, every girl, every person, God. And put a hedge of protection around all of them, Lord. Lord, we pray that shelter will be given to them. And Lord, whatever provisions need to be made that you will make them only you God you will make them amen Lord we ask that you touch any that may be sick afflicted any that may be going through any emotional trauma Lord we ask that you touch their heart and release all anxieties Release all anxieties out of their hearts, oh God. I know this is terrible. It's terrible. And me personally, I've never experienced anything like it, God. But Lord, I just pray that you have favor and mercy upon my brothers and sisters up in Texas. Amen. Amen. Okay, y'all. So, um, be sure. I'm going to try to, um, I'm going to get that number for y'all again. And the website and put it in the chat box. Thank you, ladies, for tuning in tonight and um, chatting me in the chat box. I'm going to put that number.